In this video, I'll share some tips on how to use vintage film camera lenses on your Lumix camera. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And first of all, I'd like to apologize. My voice is a little bit uh, rough today, but I hope you can still understand what I'm trying to say here. In this video, I'll talk about uh, using vintage film camera lenses on your Lumix camera. I have some tips on how to use the manual focus and how to use the adapters and which exposure modes to use and all in all how to get the best results using a vintage film camera lens on your Lumix camera body. And there are so many vintage lenses around obviously because film cameras have been around for a long time. But when the autofocus came and the digital came, those all those fine film camera vintage lenses were almost becoming obsolete because you couldn't use them on modern digital cameras anymore. You could, of course, still use film cameras and film lenses, but you could not use any of those interesting uh, vintage lenses on DSLRs because they were just not compatible. However, after we got mirrorless cameras, the whole thing changed because with an adapter you can mount almost any lens on almost any mirrorless camera body and start shooting. But why would you use these old film camera lenses on a modern digital camera anyway? Okay, here are some very valid reasons. First of all, some of these old film camera lenses are very affordable, if not downright cheap. You can get some lenses for 10 or 20 euros or dollars, which is almost for free. And another good reason is that some of these old film camera lenses are very, very sharp and they can be an excellent value for money. And one more reason is that there are so many unique and interesting lens designs in the past that are no longer made and there are no really um, like a digital equivalent to those lenses. So if you are interested in lens designs in general and you're interested in some obscure and um, unique lens designs, then you should definitely try some of these old vintage film lenses. In this video, I have some Leica R lenses that I'm gonna use as an example. These R lenses are made for Leica SLR cameras like this R6 here. And these lenses that I have are on loan from camerastore.com. And if you need a, a vintage camera lens, please go check their website. They have a huge selection of all kinds of lenses for all kinds of cameras. And I know the guys who run the store. They are honest guys and uh, very reliable. So don't hesitate to buy something from them if you find something that you're interested in. And I have a review coming up on all these uh, Leica R lenses that I have on loan. So please stay tuned also for that if you are interested. These lenses are a very good value for money and very affordable for uh, Leica lenses. And for this video I tried every Lumix camera that I have. But um, maybe some of these tips can't be used on every Lumix camera, especially some older cameras. But these tips should work on most Lumix cameras, most current Lumix cameras at least. But now let's finally get into those tips. First of all, there are no electronics in built into these lenses. So there's no communication between the camera and the lens. So you will not see any EXIF data, any lens EXIF data. So you can't see your aperture or the lens that you used when you check out your EXIF data after 
you, you uh, shot the picture. And every time you turn on your camera, the camera will ask if you want to use this focal length setting. And that is very important because the setting is for the IBIS. Uh, so the IBIS knows which kind of lens is mounted on the camera. Like I said, there is no communication between the lens and the camera, so, so the IBIS can't know what kind of a lens is mounted on the camera unless you tell the camera. So it's very important that you tell your camera the correct focal length. And when you turn on your camera, you get this same uh, like pop-up window every time. If you answer yes, you'll see the menu where you can select the, the correct uh, focal length for your lens. But you can also access the same menu by selecting your camera menu and then select stabilizer and from there you select focal length set. And this same pop-up window will appear every time you turn on your camera. It's slightly annoying, but you just uh, touch the shutter slightly and it goes away. And then, of course, you need the adapter that goes between the camera body and the lens. And you need a different adapter for every lens mount. For example, this adapter that I have here works only with these Leica R lenses. If I had, say, Nikon F mount lenses, I would need a different adapter for those lenses. But fortunately, these adapters are very affordable, so it's not very um, expensive to buy a few of them. However, it's good to acknowledge that some of the very cheap adapters can have a slightly rough finish, and also some of the very cheapest adapters may not allow you to focus to infinity. And that's because the adapter is just a fraction too long and the lens just can't focus all the way to infinity. So it's a good um, idea to do some research before you buy any of the very cheapest adapters. Some of them, or most of them, probably work really well, but some of them may have some issues. And one more thing to consider when you buy your adapter, make sure you buy the correct adapter. There are so many of them and it's easy to get confused with the, with the, with the letters and numbers and it's easy to order the wrong adapter. So make absolutely sure that you have the correct adapter before you order or buy it. And then about the focusing. Of course you have to focus manually because these lenses are manual focus lenses. And always, if it's possible, try to focus at wide open aperture because there's less depth of field and it's uh, easier to see where the, uh, the peak focus is. And also the viewfinder image is better because more light gets into the camera. If you try to focus at stop-down aperture like f8, for example, it can be really difficult to see where the peak focus is because there is so much depth of field. And in low light situation, the viewfinder image can also become really noisy. And if you have never used manual focus lenses, you may think that manual focusing is somehow difficult. But it's really not, and your Lumix camera offers some really nice focus assist functions or features. And the first one is focus peaking, which you can activate in the menu. But if you use manual focus lenses a lot, I think it's a good idea to program the focus peaking on one of the function buttons and then it's so much easier to access whenever you need it. Because if it's on all the time, it can be a little bit distracting because then you see all those focus peaking colors or contours in your viewfinder all the time. And another very good focus assist feature is the magnified view. And you have two options for that. You can either have the magnified view fill the whole viewfinder or the screen. Or you can have a picture-in-picture, -picture, 
where only a small portion of the viewfinder or the screen is magnified. And that is my favorite because at the same time I can see my framing and I can also see the magnified view. And you have to activate the magnified view manually because there is, like I said, no uh, communication between the lens and the camera. So the camera really doesn't know when you turn the focus ring. There are a couple of ways to activate the magnified view. But first you have to go into the custom spanner menu and select the focus slash release shutter. And there you select MF assist. And there you can either choose the first option or the third option. It doesn't matter which one you choose for manual focus lenses. The first one with the lens symbol, it also activates automatically the magnified view whenever you use native Lumix autofocus lenses on manual mode. But if you only use manual focus lenses, then it doesn't matter which option you choose, the first one or the third one. But make sure either one is selected. And after that, whenever you hit the AF mode button on manual mode or when you have manual focus lens mounted, you will get the magnified view with one click of a button. And if the AF mode button feels like it's not at the right location for your fingers, you can always uh, program one of the function buttons to do the same thing. On the S series full frame cameras, you also have the option to use the joystick to activate the magnified view. And to do that, you have to first go into the COG menu, then autofocus menu, and then MF assist menu. And there you select press joystick and make sure that is on. And after that, whenever you press the joystick once, you get the magnified view. And this is my favorite way to use the magnified focus assist view on uh, the Lumix S series full frame cameras. And some Lumix cameras, here's the list, have a high resolution viewfinder. And with those cameras, you can pretty easily focus without any focus assist features because the viewfinder is uh, so sharp and clear. So if you have one of these cameras, you may also want to try manual focusing without any of these features that I just explained. Oh, some of these tips are kind of long and hard to explain, but I can't find a way to make it any shorter. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then about the exposure. There are only two, two exposure modes uh, functional whenever you have a fully manual vintage lens mounted on your Lumix camera. And those exposure modes are aperture priority and manual mode. And that is because there is absolutely no connection between the lens and the camera, no electronic connection. The camera has no way to control the aperture on the lens. Therefore, the S mode and the P mode don't work. I still have a few things to say about uh, using film lenses of... <laughs> I still have a few more things to say about using vintage lenses on your Lumix camera. But before that, consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below if you find this video useful. And now let's check out some of the upsides of using vintage lenses on your Lumix camera or any camera for that matter. And the first major upside is that there's really an endless selection of vintage film lenses. And the second upside is that um, some of these lenses are really, really affordable and even cheap. And a third upside is that they, some of these lenses are really, really sharp and an, ex and an exceptional value for money. And uh, the fourth upside is that some of these vintage lenses are really unique and they can deliver 
images that are not possible on any modern lens. And here are some of the downsides of using uh, vintage lenses on a modern camera. The first is that there is no EXIF data, so you can't check afterwards which aperture or which lens you used. And the second downside is that these are only manual focus lenses. And the third downside for Micro Four Thirds users, in my opinion, um, is that there is the two times crop. For some people that is an upside, so there are many opinions on this. My opinion is that it's a downside, but it also can be uh, an upside, I guess. But one downside, at least for Micro Four Thirds users, is that it's really, really hard to find proper wide-angle lenses, because you would need something shorter than 25 millimeters, and there are not that many uh, shorter than 25 millimeter affordable uh, high quality vintage lenses available. Back in the film days, 20 millimeters was considered like a really ultra wide lens. And there are not many uh, like 15 millimeter lenses or 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter lens, film lenses available. And those that are available tend to be very expensive, and some of them are really huge also in size. And one more downside is that you need an adapter, and you need a separate adapter for each uh, lens mount that you have. But nonetheless, I really highly recommend you to try some of these old film lenses on your modern digital camera, whether it's a Lumix camera or some other camera. It can be huge fun, it's not expensive, and you may find some unique lens designs that can deliver some uh, astonishing pictures for you that you would never otherwise find. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And before you go, you may want to check out this video. Thank you, and see you in the next one.